Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's such a pleasure to be in such a wonderful venue this afternoon. I'm going to talk to you with Rich about um, a project that we've run at Roughborough to help BTEC students um, actually uh, uh, transform themselves into higher education students at the beginning of the year. So um, this project was actually developed with uh, a few other um, universities, so with Queen Mary, Exeter and the University of Birmingham. And um, we wanted to look at the way um, that BTEC students um, actually um, did induction when they came to university. So um, we did interviews, look at the theory of change, uh, the difference between BTEC students and A-levels, um, for which we did focus groups, um, interventions and uh, we've got a findings report from this data. Um, the drivers were diversity and actually encouraging more BTEC students to actually attend university after they've completed their BTEC. Uh, we've identified a, a gap potentially in um, study skills for these students and the, like I said the project was aimed at pre-arrival to university and we looked at the idea of uh, delivering this package online. So the research behind this, I don't know whether you all know, but 26% of university applicants are in, in fact BTEC students. Um, and these BTEC students are often academically less successful students who enter uh, than traditional A-level students. Um, they are more likely to drop out uh, in their first year. And they actually come from a more social, econo economically disadvantaged background or from an um, ethnic minority background and live in um, areas which have low HE participation. So um, we looked at the student experience in itself. So we did one-to-one -one interviews to collect data and also focus groups. We spoke to first year HE students and second year FE students to see what their attitudes were to actually attending HE and what problems they'd encountered in doing this and what the differences were with their A-level colleagues. The majority uh, were BTEC students, but we also spoke to some A-level students and um, we wanted to uh, actually provide that comparison. So in terms of um, lecturers and FE tutors also provided some more ex um, uh, data on this sort of issue. So we had quite a lot of interesting um, comments also from our BTEC students. They'd actually come into the university and we looked at them at the end of the first year to see what issues that they'd actually had. So some had never done exams for a long period of time. So maybe when they were at school they did exams, but in their BTEC they'd not done exams. So they had a whole new learning experience from that. Um, they had problems with maths. They had issues with English and writing in a more academic style. They also had um, a feeling of disenfranchisism from the actual community itself because the majority of the students are actually A-level students. So in terms of doing this, we looked at the idea of improving retention, um, making um, the induction process more inclusive for these particular students, and also addressing some of the um, gaps in study skills. We wanted to improve diversity. We wanted to provide something that was more interactive for these students when they arrived to form a community. Uh, we wanted them to feel that they were equal to the A-level students. and We wanted to use an online platform to deliver this. And I'm actually going to let Keith Pond actually talk to you about our thoughts on this process. Well, our initial research with um, BTEC students in FE colleges and with our own undergraduate students uh, on their first year of entry were that there were certain skills that they felt they needed a lot more practice on, a lot more development of. These skills were in writing, academic writing, uh, they were in maths particularly, and the skills the transition skills, working in a different way, working differently, working in groups, working um, to a high level with different people from different backgrounds. Well, our initial research... Sorry, 
just not moved on, has it? Well, our initial research with... <laughs> so basically what we've ended up with is a, a, a different um, sort of island for pe uh, sea for people to navigate if you're a BTEC student. So you recognise you've got a skill gap, skills gap and also you've got transitional issues to do with how you feel and the community that you're involved with. So I'm actually going to stop there and um, think, uh, get you to think about the project overall. Now, at this point, you can see that we've done the research. You can see that we're ready to do some sort of intervention. And the other universities involved in this project um, were all in that position. Uh, um, but we decided, actually, that we didn't want to do something that was just recycling of induction materials we already had. We wanted to actually do something different with the actual interface itself that we were going to use, which is our um, VLE. And also, um, Within this actual project, there wasn't actually much funding to support uh, a big team producing an interface. It was actually only me at the end of the day, and I was only given 30 hours. So if you think of it as um, enter stage right, the learning technologist, two months before the actual project was going to be produced. And I was actually only given 30 hours to actually produce this project. So in terms of that, we were up against it from the start, but we were sure that we wanted to produce something slightly differently. Um, and we also wanted to change the way that we'd normally deliver these materials. So one of the first things I looked at was actually looking at collaborating with the BTEC students we had that were in the first year or finishing the first year. So we asked them to get involved in what we were going to produce. Um, because we're sporty at Loughborough, we decided to call this module warm-up. Um, so we got some students involved, we went out and did some video, uh, we looked at the idea of them peer supporting this actual module rather than us, and making the community for these students to enter and um, improve their study skills. We also looked at having a diagnostic quiz. So that's our current interface as it is. Uh, there, and I'm going to get Rich to come up and actually talk about the way that we change the interface to improve the way that we deliver things. So on this, we were going to put a, a different spin on what we normally do in our VLA, just for these students. Thanks, Sandra. Uh, so this is a, a screenshot from our VLA, uh, which is called Learn. It's been called Learn for 20 years now. Um, it's gone through many different iterations. Um, and uh, we've been using Moodle for about 12 years now. Um, so this is our interpretation of Moodle. Uh, we've got three different themes that we can use, plus a different theme that's on the mobile device. Um, and we've kind of put a lot, a lot of work into iterating this over the years um, to kind of get it to how we, how we have it looking, which is reasonably nice. Um, and uh, it gets reasonably good feedback. Um, but more and more over the last few years, we've seen lots of people wanting to just change something slightly, try and make it a bit less like a VLE. Um, these VLEs that are supposed to be dead again this year, as they were 10 years ago, they're still not dead, but it's there. It works, people love it. Um, so we get lots of uh, requests and we've been working with uh, lots of colleagues across campus, including Sandra and uh, some other people around in different areas, um, just to try and make the VLE look a little bit less like a VLE, because you've got all these little things like the navigation block, you can see there in the top left, bit of stuff in the module administration area for students to see activity results, um, things like reading list and the module card. Now, these are all applicable to this particular module. This is a standard undergraduate module. But when we start to fit in things like uh, warm-up, um, we need to try and adapt the approach um, and see how things are going to work um, for those students that have got no idea what all of this stuff would mean to them. Um, so leaving it there would be far too confusing. Um, so we, uh, we took this approach of uh, making some adaptations just to make it look a little bit less like a VLE, um, even though underneath it's still exactly the same. Uh, so now in the top right here, you can see the screenshot of uh, this particular module course in other people's parlance, but we call them modules um, for, uh, for the warm-up project. Um, and you'll see the little uh, blocks that we've got dotted here around the screen of the things that we used. Um, so there's nice colorful icons um, to dot uh, move students around to the different areas, go to the quiz, look at all the different skills that they need to use, um, watching the video. Um, so this is all, again, based on the standard Moodle and the standard Moodle experience, 
um, but by taking away some of those little blocks in there that, uh, that make no uh, sense to the, the students who are going to be on this warm-up course because they've not been at the university and don't know what all these things mean, um, it just makes their experience just that little bit nicer um, to be able to come in and just uh, fiddle around with the page a bit. Um, for our standard undergraduate students and postgrads, they want a reasonably consistent experience where everything is in the same place. If they go onto the module, then the lecture capture block is on the top right-hand side, and there's a reading list block down there, and there's a few other things, and things move around, and you get different mod module formats like grid and buttons and all these other kind of things. Um, but um, for this uh, module, it was much uh, better to have this much more tailored approach um, which had a much better experience for those students who are working on this module. Um, and then if they um, come along and uh, transition to be Loughborough students, um, then they'll still see a lot of these elements when they come and uh, take their undergraduate modules, um, but they'll just get, uh, get a bit more familiarity and experience. Okay. Back to Sandra. Okay. And back to technology. Right. Um, Basically, um, we had uh, then a piloting phase for this module. We ran it with students definitely before they came. They had to confirm they were coming first, and then Rich organised some guest um, module access in order for them to go in. Like I said before, we had a diagnostic quiz, which we produced, and that gave them an idea which area of study they wanted to do, whether they wanted to look at transitional skills, whether they wanted to look at the math skills, um, it gave them a rating to see where they were wearing those things and, and gave them a test to be able to do that. Um, so in terms of this, it ran successfully with peer support from the students that we've recruited. Um, there was a forum and various questions were produced in terms of um, an idea of what students' issues were with that sort of thing. It ran very well um, over that pilot period. Um, but in sort of tandem with this, uh, the university had then decided to produce their own induction materials, so we've run it once, and then the university's main induction actually has taken over. But we've still got the resources from that, which fed into that actual process. So I'm going to um, let Keith have the final word and actually tell, us, tell you all what we actually learned from this process. Well, we learned three key things. We learned that, yes, there is a gap in the development needs of not only BTEC students, but also A-level students, or students coming to university, the development of the skills they will need to succeed in their courses. We also learned there was quite a gap between what the universities were preparing and had available for students to develop those skills and the skills uh, needs that these students had. And one third thing that we learned was that when we do have a project that people believe in, that is reasonably well funded, it brings in lots of voluntary help, lots of different skills, and people feel really good about providing a project that has such positive results. Well, we learned three key things. We learned that, yes, there is a gap in the development needs of... Right, and there are the references for this project. Uh, we are looking at putting the diagnostic quiz out as an um, OER um, free resource, so please look out for that. Uh, because we, we're not, now no longer using it in, in there. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much indeed. That was uh, very well timed um, and a lot in there for us to think about. Um, this time I'm going to go straight to VVOX um, uh, for the questions we've received there. I think it might be coming up on the big screen. Um, but uh, the first one, will any of your course design ideas be adopted by regular undergraduate courses? Uh, yes, they have. They've, they've, we've got a project um, to do with induction at Loughborough, which uh, seems to run in parallel with our project, uh, which is called um, Personal Best. And some of the design ideas were taken into that, uh, particularly the diagnostic quiz, um, to be used by all university students, not just these students. Great. Fantastic. Uh, and do you want to tackle the top question as well? 
Um, we're still looking at using um, and talking with formed relationships with FE colleges in this actual process. Our local colleges um, were very much involved in actually designing our content. So yeah, we're still continuing to work with those students and also look at how we might be of more help. Great, thank you. Um, we've, we've got another, yeah, we've got easily another four minutes for questions. Okay. So we'll check if there are any in the audience that have been submitted online already. Yes, down the front here. We'll just bring the mic to you. And if you could say who you are as well, please, when you ask your question. Hi, I'm Laura Hollinshead from the University of Derby. I was just wondering if you're planning to track the retainment and achievement of those students who perhaps have taken the course. There are no plans as such at the moment. I think the university decided that it would be better to use our actual current uh, per, uh, personal best stuff to cover a blanket cover of everybody rather than track the individual students. So not at this point. Thank you. Any other questions in the audience? Okay, we have another on the uh, VVOX. Um, what's the connection with FutureLearn? Uh, in terms of FutureLearn, we looked at FutureLearn as an inspiration for looking at the way that we would um, construct the actual course. We've not got the course to show you today, but um, we looked at the way that it, um, you navigated through the course and also the, t the way that FutureLearn um, produced interactivity. So we use that as a basis to design what we did in the end. Great, thank you. Um, I'll just a final check for any other questions in the audience. In which case, if we thank Sandra and Richard again, please. Edina's work with learning technologists helps to develop skilled, data literate students who can change our world for the better. Teachers and students can develop and share coding skills with Notable, our Jupyter Notebook service. Our Digimap services deliver high quality mapping data for all stages of education. Future developments include a text and data mining service, working with satellite data and machine learning, and smart campus technology.